Okay, so I got uh, some assignments back. Sorry I don't have your exams yet. It's going to be uh, maybe another day or two before I get those back. I know it's been a week, so apologize about that. Um, but we have to keep moving. Um, so today, last time what we did is we introduced the idea of a curve fit. And remember the main question that we want to answer is we have this theory about how our performance should behave asymptotically with large values of n. And each one of our sort algorithms is either t of n big theta of n squared or t of n big theta of n log n. And we said that the way to, cal the way to actually have a statistical test to tell us which way our functions grow is to calculate this residual standard error. And remember the idea behind the residual standard error, it's we had this example with a line and we said uh, the y sub i is the actual data value and the y hat sub i is the value on the line that minimizes the residual standard error. And the residual standard error takes each one of those, the difference between those, in other words, the, the length of that line between the data point and the curve. And it squares them all, and then it adds up all the squares, and then it divides by the degrees of freedom, and then it takes the square root of that, and that's the residual standard error. And what the program can do is it can adjust, for a line it can adjust the slope and the intercept, and when it does that, it looks like the line goes through the, right through the middle of the data points. And the only difference between the line and what we're doing is that what our curve, our curves are not lines, they are either quadratics, they're either parabolas of the form a n squared plus b n plus c or a n log n plus b n plus c. And so what our program can do is it can adjust not just the slope and the intercept, but it can adjust A and B and C to minimize those, the residual standard error. And so the program, the plan then, is to, when you have a set of data, is to do a curve fit for both A n squared plus B n plus C, and then with the same data do another curve fit with the curve a n log n plus b n plus c. And each one of those curve fits is going to minimize the RSE to that curve. And then, and then the way we use that statistic is we have these two numbers and how do we tell, how do, how do we tell whether it's quadratic or n log n? It's the curve that has the what? The well, but how do you know which one has the better fit? The lower RSE. Now, is everybody, everybody with, is it, are we all together on this? Okay, it's the one with the lower RSE. So what I'm going to, the next slide here has a printout of what you're, when you run that script, the curve fit script that I've written for you, this is an example of what's going to come out when you do uh, like a quadratic fit. And what the data will tell you is it will actually give you the values of the A and B and C. So you see that intercept, that's one of the, that's one of the coefficients. And so there's three coefficients. And in this case we are doing a quadratic fit. So it's a... Um, it gives you the, the estimated, those estimated values of A, B, and C. And then what I've underlined here is it also gives you the residual standard error. And this says seven degrees of freedom. Now why do you suppose this is seven degrees of freedom? Where did that seven, this seven, where did that seven come from in the seven degrees of freedom? Like the, number of data points. the number of data points minus the what? The coefficients. The number of coefficients. How many coefficients do we have? Two. No, I think this is like A, B, and C. All right, so then it would be three, three and so and we have 10 data points. So 10 minus three, that's where the seven comes from. Okay, in a real experiment, you'd take many more, much more data. In fact, you might want to do that. Um, you might want to explore if you have some questions. 
But then also the key number here is you see where it says residual standard error 72850. So that's the RSE for the, for the quadratic curve fit. And then on the next slide here, we have an example of an N log N fit. And so here again, there are three um, coefficients. And notice down here, it says <coughs> residual standard error 206,100. So what do you do? You compare that with what? 72,850. Does everybody see how that... How you read that off. And which one is smaller? 72,000 or 206,000, obviously. 72,000, 72, and therefore that data is, is what? Fits a quadratic better than it does an n log n. And so, that, and so that's the conclusion. So you see how to, how to decide that. All right, so here, so you compare 72,850 quadratic with the 206,000 N log N conclusion, the performance is quadratic. So that's how you use this, these statistics. And here, I also have, the, what the script will give you, is it will also give you a plot of the two curves. The, it'll show, show you the data, you know, so the black circles are the data. And this is number sorted, and what, what we have here is number of comparisons. And you see the red line is the... No, I think the red line is the n squared. Are you with me? Because look, first of all, the, dot, the, the, the fit is closer to the red one. And you see up here at the end, the red one is going to... There's a crossover point up here at the end. The red one's going to take off. You see, whereas the blue, the blue one is the cur is the best curve fit for n log n. So everybody see how, you see how that. You, so does everybody see how to how to analyze the data? That's all right. So now here's here is now what now what I what, what I'd like to do is for us to go over what how, how to write your paper. So, these are the, we have these three questions that you need to answer. So the first one, is, and by the way, this is all on the assign. This is all outlined in the assignment. I, I just copied this from the assignment uh, that's posted on the <coughs> website. So the first one is, and this one's easy. What is the theoretical big theta of the insertion sort, selection sort, heap sort, merge sort? We even had a slide. Okay, but anyway, that needs to be in your paper, obviously. Okay, and then here's the big question, two big questions. First of all, explain how your graphs either confirm or do not confirm your answer in part A. Okay, and so you need to explain in your own words what the residual standard error is. And then when you compare your experiment with your data, you need to quote the specific RSE values that lead you to your conclusion. Is everybody... See, and we just showed how to do that. And then another, the third question is, of the five sort algorithms, which one is best in practice according to your data? So, those three questions. All right, and we have five different sorts, five different sort algorithms. Okay, now, here is, there are two tools that are really valuable. They're both, I mentioned this before, they're both open source, they're both widely used, and and part of the um, part of this exercise is not just learning how to write a research paper, but part of it is using the tools that are very that will that are very useful. Uh, and so I'm going to require that you use LaTeX. Now, here's the thing: if you don't use LaTeX to typeset your paper, I won't even grade it. Okay, so this is not optional. And believe me, it's obvious when a paper has not been typeset in LaTeX. Okay, so I'll be able to tell right off the bat. So just go ahead and grin and bear it <laughs> when you, to, to learn LaTeX. In fact, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna demo how to use LaTeX here. Okay, so like I mentioned before, LaTeX is a, well, tech, the original was, um, the original is 
is called capital T, lowercase e, capital X, tech. And this was uh, developed by Donald Knuth at Stanford many years ago. In fact, he, he has a famous series of books, The Art of Computer Programming. Um, and he wanted to write this book and, there was, and he wanted to put math, you know, lots of math in it and lots of programming and lots of, you know, it was, it was a, and, and there was nothing around, there, there was no system at the time for being able to typeset. So he, so instead of just using what was available, he just went ahead and invented a typesetting system. And uh, he, so he did that and then uh, many years later, several years later, there was a, a an add-on. Uh, that was built on, so tech was very, you had to be, you really had to be a programmer. You had to basically program your, your manuscript to this. And then there was, uh, LaTeX was a more user, a friendlier user layer between the raw tech. This was uh, developed by Leslie Lamport. And, and we're going to use a version called XE LaTeX which is on top of LaTeX. So, um, but, the, but this LaTeX and Z LaTeX, not so much, but de definitely LaTeX, is, is the standard way to, um, to typeset all kinds, uh, it's used in all kinds of disciplines. It's used in math, physics, computer science. So it's a very, <coughs> very useful language, uh, typesetting language. In fact, all the math that, y that you see on these slides is all typeset with LaTeX. Okay, so I have three resources for you. There is a setup for LaTeX uh, document on the course webpage, and then there is a there is a, a, a zip file, a zipped file called paper template that has LaTeX that has uh, the tech version of of a sample paper that you can use. And what I recommend you do is, I've given you this paper, what you should do is you should copy it and rename it and modify it to make your own paper. You see what I'm saying? So it's like a template. And I'm, I'll, we'll, we'll demo it now actually. Okay, now before I, before, we did, before I do the demo, here's the thing, here's one of, one of the features of, of, of the tech. It's at the end of the paper. There's a, at the end of the paper uh, of uh, research paper. There is typically a bibliography of references that are cited. Okay, and uh, it's it's a little bit of a process to get the bibliography set up. So I've set up a dummy bibliography for you. And this is what this is what you'll have to do to get the bibliography set up. You only have to do this once at the beginning. And so. The very first time you open the document, you've got, to do, you've got to do four different runs. First of all, you select LaTeX and you click the typeset button. So that runs through the document the very first time. And when it runs through the document the very first time, it sees that you're using a bibliography. As, as, okay? And it doesn't, know what that, it doesn't know about that bibliography yet. So the second thing you'd have to do is you set BibTeX which is the bibliography part of tech. And you click the typeset button and that compiles your bibliography. So now your bibliography is, is compiled and then you go back to LaTeX and you click the typeset button on LaTeX and that goes through and it integrates the bibliography with, the, with your paper. But it needs one more run to resolve any, uh, it needs one more run to resolve any unknown references. So the last thing you do is you click LaTeX, you select LaTeX again and click the typeset button. And let, let's demo that now. So here, oh, one more, th one more really important thing when you use LaTeX. <coughs> click the typeset button often. Because look, we're all programmers here, right? <laughs> you know what happens? Do you know what you're basically what you're doing is you're compiling your your paper. You see what I'm saying? It's like a compile. The tech system is like a compiler. Now, you, what's the best? What, what's the worst way to write a program? 
to get the whole thing written from start to finish and then do what? Try to, yeah, try to debug it. You try to compile it. It's better if you do what? Start small, compile, get all those bugs out, add some, compile, get the bugs out, add some more, get, okay? So it's the same way with, 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 with LaTeX. The, the, mess, the error messages are very cryptic. It's, it's, you kind of have to, I mean, there's lots of these error messages that I don't get, but, but, I, I, but basically what, it, what, what it'll do is it'll show you where the problem is. And if, you, and if you have a whole bunch of, of content in your tech file uh, bef with a whole lot of different bugs, it's really, really difficult. So you need, you need to click the type set button often. Okay, so, okay, so here's going to be our demo now. So what you will download is this paper-template.zip. And when you, double, when you uncompress this, there will be a folder called paper template. And here's what's going to be inside the paper template folder. And uh, the main source document here is this .tech file. Okay, Th these, these are some figures that I've given to you. If you want to incorporate them in your paper, you can do those. And then, um, and then uh, so what you do is, Oh, and here's the bib. Remember we said the bib file? So th this is the bibliography file, okay? And the first time, and, and if, when you double click the, the, a document that is to be typeset in tech, the file extension is .tex, .tech. So we'll double click this. Now, and so what happens is there's gonna be two windows. This is the tech um, source file and this is the paper template. So what you should do is this is the file that you should rename and use as your template. So, um, and what I have here is a little, this comment right here puts us in the Zlatech mode regardless of what is up here. Okay. And here's one more thing before we get started. This is set up for typesetting on a Mac. So these four lines here have to do with the, um, with the uh, fonts that are come standard on, uh, on a Mac. And you can tell here that the comment, comments begin with a percent sign. So for Windows users, what you should do is comment these, these four out or delete them and uncomment these and use these fonts for your you know, this, the, these are the fonts that come standard with the window, with win, on a Windows machine. Okay, so that's just a little heads up for that. And uh, so here it says, "Title my first paper," blah blah blah, and all of this stuff is. So this is what you're going to edit when you write your paper. This is you, you'll write your paper in this in this window. So now, so check this out. So up here we have a choice. You know, the user interface is going to be a little bit different for Windows, but. And oh, and by the way, the uh, tech version that I'm using here and that I highly recommend on the Mac side is Tech Shop. So, and all of these, you know, how to install it, that's all on the website. Okay, so look, you see there's plain tech, there's LaTeX, there's BibTeX, and so on. All right, and there's actually ZLaTeX, but you know, you don't really have to do ZLaTeX. If you do LaTeX, it's just going to do ZLaTeX because of this, of this script here. Okay, so remember, so what did we say? The first time we the first time we do it, we click, we typeset LaTeX. So here, we'll typeset LaTeX. Now watch what happens. See, there it goes, boom, and there it is. So it set it, it typeset it. My first paper for data structures. Of course, you have to replace that with your title, and it has all this stuff in it, which we'll go through in a minute. And then it's got, see it has a, a figure here, and look what it has, figure, it hasn't resolved the figure number yet, see? And then if we come down here, um, if we come down here to the end, notice that we have conclusion and then there's no bibliography down here, right? So that was our first run. Now the second run, what did we, what did we say to do? Bibtech. So Bibtech, and we typeset it once. With, now when we do typeset the Bibtech, now it says this is Bibtech version, blah, 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 blah the file, blah, 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 blah. And if we go down to our, see now what has happened is, at this point, if we go back to our file system, we see all of these, 
auxiliary files. There's a dot auxiliary file that appears now. There's this, uh, I'll demo this, what this file does in a minute. And also there's, there is a dot PDF file. So this dot PDF file was created. Okay. But now we have to go back, let's go back to tech. And, um, and what did we say? So that was BibTech. Then what do we have to do? Go back to LaTeX. By the way, it's pronounced LaTeX, not LaTeX. <laughs> <laughs> and and, um, and we'll type set it once more. Okay, and look, now we've got references down here. See, uh, we have to do it one more time to make sure that it's, that it's all done. Okay, and so now, and so now here's, here's the paper with all these elements in it. And notice that there, here's, here's the definition of RSE and all this kind of stuff. All right? So now here's, how, so here's what you would do. So here's my first paper for data structures, your title instead. So what do you, how, do you, how do you change that to your title? Well, oh, now check this out, you guys. Watch this. On the Mac, the way, the way this works, it's like this. Here it says, in your paper, this section will explain how. Now watch. If I am in the PDF and I press the command key and I click, watch what happens. It takes me to the location in the tech file of where that text is. Did you see that? And there's a similar feature on all these text systems, right? And furthermore, you can go the other way around. Like over here, if, if I have some, say, in the same way you can put figures side by side, if I command click here, Boom, it takes me this way in the same way you can put your figures, see? So that's a pretty nice, use that, you, you, you will use that feature a lot. And the file that makes that happen, that's what this paper template, this .gz file, this .gz file is the file that puts those two views together, you see? Okay. Okay, so let's take a look at a few, at a few little aspects of what, it ta of what it's going to take to write this paper. So let's go back to the um, to the .tech file. So, so here's the .tech file, and so um, so for example, here um, to change the title, you can see. Um, so here, my first title, blah blah blah. Your name. Uh, so, so no, what you would do is is um, Get rid of this. See, put your so so. Here's my own title, and everything is enclosed in braces, right? My own title, and then and so we don't want we don't want this to be here anymore, right? Your text title. So we got to make sure that. So does that close the brace and close the paren? So if we delete that. Now, what do you do often? Typeset. Typeset. Type now let's go back up here. See? My own title. All right? So that's how you, that's how you, you use the LaTeX. And this document uh, walks you through all these features. It shows you, so here's how to, here's how to do typesetting. Check this out. This is slick. Have you guys done this? Have you, has anybody in here used LaTeX before? A few people. Okay, some math. Yeah, some math people. So you guys are, have a head start. So look, here's this, here's the definition of RSE, root, the residual standard error. It's R, and so this starts the, um, this bash left bracket starts the display of a math equation and this bash left bracket ends the display and this is RSE, and he, look, it's SQRT, the square root of, and then this brace closes this brace, and then this, this is a fraction, and then what's, what's in this part of the fraction, so we have two left braces, three left braces, boom, boom. That's the numerator, right? And this is the denominator, right? So that's the numerator and that's the denominator. And then that's the end of it. And here's minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. It's also a fraction. And this is the square root around the whole thing. Does everybody see how that works? I thought he wrote hat. 
Oh, right. Well, that hat is, oh, look, that's bash hat. So, a bash, the bash, yeah, that's a good point. See, look, this bash hat here, what does that correspond to? That's this hat on top of the Y. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So anyway, I have a uh, I have a document uh, that there's all kinds of tutorials about how to use tech online, and I have a document that that uh, summarizes uh, some of these for you, uh, and uh, and you can tell uh, uh, by example here, and also this this template paper itself show, gives gives should give you enough instructions to be able to actually typeset your typeset your paper and it shows you how to, to include figures and side-by-side uh, -side figures and shows you how to include these PDFs um, from our text. And here this table, it also shows you how to typeset this table. And that's what your job to, is going to be for your next assignment. Your, your next assignment is to just typeset, you know, take the data and, and take this template and put the numbers in here so you can see where these numbers come from if we see it basically what you'll do is you, you'll put those numbers in here here and here and here you'll take your data and put those numbers here so that that table will be uh, that data table will be filled out okay any questions I think we're gonna conclude the demo okay so anyway that's the, La the LaTeX demo um, and remember, click that typeset button often because you know, if, you, if you put a whole bunch, you, you can see that the, the LaTeX sources can be kind of cryptic. And if you, make a, if, you, if you make more than like two or three mistakes at a time, it's really hard to, to pinpoint it. You know, it's really hard to find it. That's, that's my number one advice on how to use LaTeX effectively. Okay, so now also in that paper then I have a table that's typeset that looks just like this. And what your assignment is going to be for uh, next time is to um, take the data and populate this table with your data. All right. And so there's going to be a table for the number of comparisons and another figure there's going to be a table for a number of assignments. And so uh, you can take that using that parametric dec decoration. Now, I, uh, with this paper, we're going to write two papers in this course. This paper is um, on sort techniques. We're going to do another pa paper on hash table. Now, with this paper, with this first one, I'm going to be very specific on how to organize it. Okay? So I'm giving you this um, a very detailed guideline on how to organize a, a, pa a research paper. Okay, first of all, uh, the, the, there has to be, you know, up at the top, you have to have the title, name, and the date. That's all for you, uh, set up for you uh, with the template. Now, another, so here's the organization. First section has to be an abstract. In one short paragraph, describe the purpose of your paper and your conclusions. That's the abstract. Second section is going to be introduction. You explain in one paragraph the assignment as if the reader were a stranger who does not know you or Pepperdine University. All right. And the other thing about the introduction section is in the introduction section you summarize what each of the following sections describes. So this is kind of like the way, the, the way to format your, your paper. Okay. For, for the method, then a third section will be the method section and you explain how you took the data and how you analyze it for each question that your paper addresses. Now this needs to be describing in your own words how the data was taken so you need to explain all the um, the parametric decoration and how all that worked and where the data came from so that's uh, section three section four needs to be the results section so the results section has the raw data in table form as well as the result of the curve fits and um, it has a discussion of the questions to be answered now here is the biggest mistake that students make when writing a paper for the first two or three times is not being wordy enough. You, you, have, to be, you have to read the leader, 
you have to lead the reader <laughs> through the paper step by step. You can't just say like the data shows this and leave it up to the reader to, to understand why the data shows this. What you need to do is make a statement and then back it up by referring to a specific piece of data or a specific value of the RSE in your table or however you want to display it. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's, it's make a statement, back it up with data. Make another statement of your conclusion, back it up with the data. And you need to be very explicit about how that, about why what you said is true and why the data shows that. Okay, so that's a key, a key idea. And then in the, in the conclusion, sec, uh, s section five is the conclusion, one paragraph of the conclusions from your experiment. And um, I'm, uh, th there's actually, there's, um, I have a, if you look at the, this is, this is overall um, uh, very general. I have on the web, on the, uh, on the actual assignment in your, on the, course web page if you read the assignment this is broken down into more detail so section you know 4.1 4.2 4.3 to to give you more so so refer to that refer to that assignment that's on the course web page for how to organize the paper in more detail and what i have here is a sample paper that i just pulled out at random from the literature um, notice that so this is just so you can see what a research paper looks like Okay, this happens to be a hardware paper. Origin 2000 Design Enhancements for Communication Intensive Applications. So there's the title, there's the abstract. In a research paper, the abstract is normally uh, italicized. Um, and here I have outlined for you, see look here in, in, in section one. What's the very last thing up here in section one that's, that's highlighted in red or boxed in red? Section two reviews the communication costs. Section three expands on these. Section four, you see. This summarizes for the reader what's coming up. Do you see? This is a very common standard style for research communication, for research papers. Okay. So in the intro section, the last paragraph in your intro section um, tells the reader what's coming up in the, in the following sections. And then here's the, in, here's the introduction section of this. The, the complete paper is available for you online uh, from our website. And here, um, another issue is um, never have a figure that doesn't refer to it. Always refer to, so, so you, you, you have to refer, you need to refer to every figure in every table. So here it says, as shown in figure two, each node has a cache coherence controller. The CCC has multiple internal paths, etc. So here's figure two <coughs> is, you know, it's referring to figure two. So all of your, whenever you write and you refer the reader to a table or to a figure, you refer to the figure by number like this, okay? And here's another example. As shown in figure three, two nodes share one number, and then figure three, a 16 node cube interconnect. So, uh, and then here, there's always a list of references with uh, numbered, and by the way, LaTeX will alphabetize your bibliography and do the numbering all automatically. You can see how to do that in the, in the tech document. Okay. Now, the paper that I'm showing you here is is two columns single spaced. But what I want you to hand in is not two columns. I want you to do it like, like the paper is here, but space and a half. Because I want to, and I, the, the template shows you how to do that, because I want to be able to make comments. Okay, so when I, when I evaluate your paper. Uh, but but it's, all set up, it's all set up to do it. Uh, or, it's either set up to do it that way or there's a slight modification that you need to do to set it up that way. I don't remember which. Okay. Is everybody, is everybody good? So now here's the thing. For, so what you need to do is um, you need to have your, you need to have your, your algorithms for all five sort methods, all working correctly and debugged. Okay, so I, 
so I actually, for those of you who handed in homeworks and didn't get the algorithms quite right, I, I have the solutions for you. So you're going to have to get the solutions and up and get your, get them all, get all of your code working. Yeah. Which, which sift down would you like us to use, the iterative or the recursive one? The iterative. Yes, because that's the most efficient. So yeah, yeah. So we want we want to use the best versions that we know of of each one of the algorithms. Yeah. So if you need the solution, if you didn't if you didn't get your homeworks done, or uh, you know, check with me. I can I can now that the now that the homeworks already handed in, I can give you solutions. Okay. So if you need that, just shoot me an email, and I can I can give I can get you the the code that you need to do to do the paper. Now, so now, is all I want you to do for this, for this first assignment is, is get the data, get LaTeX installed, get RStudio and R installed, and just populate the, populate the tables with the data and make one run with R so that I can just see, so that, we, so that you can just, you know, so we, so we can just see what the, what the, RSE is. That's all. You don't have to do write anything. It's just a setup to make sure that you have this all set up because to actually write the paper is going to be the time consuming part. And that's not due until assignment 14. So that's not due for weeks. So you, you have even until after the next test is when it's due. But you need to get started. You need to get all the machinery set up on your, on your computers. Yeah. How do you want us to turn that in uh, with LaTeX? I want you to turn in, no, I want you to turn in the PDF. Okay, so we can use whatever thing we want to, and then turn it into PDF and measure it. No, no, the PDF, this, LaTeX creates a PDF. So you want us to use LaTeX to create the PDF? Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. If, when you use LaTeX, you know that, those two windows? That was a PDF window. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's automatic. It's automatic. You don't have to, yeah. Uh huh. So the next paper we're writing, it's not the same topic. It's a no, no, no. Yeah, it'll be way. Oh, okay. Yeah, it'll be way later. Way later in the course. Yeah, we're gonna. One of the data structures that we're gonna study is called a hash table. And hash tables are very efficient. We're gonna want to study how they how they perform, also. And guess what? We will use hash table to store what? Not doubles, but what? Guess what, we, guess what the hash table will store? It won't store doubles, it won't store its, ints. What will it store? CA metrics. CA metrics. <laughs> are you with me? And then we'll be able to do some performance on that. Yeah. See, look, you guys. This whole thing. Um, basically what we're doing is we are experiencing a library. Look, whenever you, whenever you write commercial software with using an IDE, what's an IDE? Integrated development. integrated development environment. All integrated development environments have libraries that are, that are, have interchangeable parts. They give you data structures with interchangeable parts. Do you see what we're saying? And this DP4DS and so as computer scientists, we want to know what's behind the scenes with all these libraries that we're going to be using from now on. We need to understand how they all work. We need to understand how hash tables work, how linked lists work, how, you know, how all this stuff, and how we can use them together seamlessly, reusable, elements of reusable software. So we're, you see what we're saying? So this DP4DS distribution is we're, we're going to be using parts of it over and over and over again. See? Be, because this is typical of the way libraries, you know, software libraries are, um, are provided for, the, for software developers. Are we good? Um, so I'm sure there will be questions as we go along uh, about the paper and we'll, we'll, try to, we'll try to, you know, keep keep those questions being answered as we go along. But I just emphasize, want to emphasize, don't wait until the last minute. One more last thing. Since we have just a few minutes left, let me introduce what we're going to do tomorrow, at the beginning of class tomorrow. Now, uh, so every once in a while, 
in these courses. There is a theorem that is so important and so fundamental that I will tell you ahead of time that this question is going to be on the next exam. This is one of them. Okay? There is a super important result in computer science and algorithm design that is a comparison sort bound. Now, let's just contemplate this. Now, what's big omega? Is that a lower bound or an upper bound? That's a lower bound. So if you, if you claim that all algorithms have a lower bound, that means they can't be what? Does, it, does that mean they can't be better than n log n or they can't be worse than n log n? They can't be better. Because if, if one algorithm is this bad, but another algorithm is better than that, and another algorithm is even better than that, but there is a lower bound, that means the what? Oh, it can't, lower. yeah, it means it can't be better. Is everybody clear on that? I'll make it as a lower bound. What we're going to prove at the beginning of the class tomorrow is that any sort of n elements that is based on element comparison and exchange is big omega of n log n. Now let's think about that. How many, we've five different sorts. What's insertion sort? Big theta of what? N squared. What's quick sort? Oh, quick sort, uh, best case. N log N, right? Do, are any of the sorts big theta of N? Yes or no? No. Are any of the sorts log N? Yes or no? No. Do you think that's a coincidence? You know, the best ones that we have found so far have been what? N log N. Are you with me? Is everybody clear? What we're going to do tomorrow is we're going to prove that any sort of N elements that is based on element comparison and change is big omega of n log n. In other words, it can't be better. Now this is quite a remarkable result because look, how do you know that somebody just hasn't been clever enough to come up with one? Do you see what I mean? Maybe somebody, maybe someday somebody will come up with one. Maybe it's just we just haven't been smart enough. No. That's not the case. I don't care how smart you are. We're going to prove that you can't do it better. How are we going to do that? Uh, huh? Assume that you can do it better and prove the continuity. Oh, that, yeah, that, that's how you prove the halting problem. Yeah. Um, assume that you can do it and then prove that that leads to a contradiction. No, we're not going to use that technique. Well, but hey, but how, we can't. T we can't. Yeah, you, you, we can't look at all the sort methods. You know, like if we cataloged all the sort methods that are known to mankind. You know, and then said, "Well, look, none of them are." But that's that's not a proof. We're going to be able to prove it mathematically. So stay tuned. Previews of coming attractions. Okay, we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>